Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I'm reviewing the Uperfect Delta Max 18.5 inch dual stacked portable monitor system. It retails for roughly $550. US I'll include a link in the description. And in full disclosure, this was furnished to me by the manufacturer for review purposes, but this is not a sponsored review. With that out of the way, as you already noticed, I've got the Lenovo YogaBook 9i on the right, arguably really the best device of its kind ever made. Great audio quality, great battery life, but two displays in a form factor that traditionally is relegated to one. Both are touchscreen, support pen input. You've got, you know, an included uh, mouse and keyboard, which I am using for the demonstration here. But the focus is on this, right? We've got a monitor finally to match. And again, at $550, roughly five pounds, we get two 18 and a half inch full HD displays, 60 Hertz refresh rate, so not ideal for gaming. This is really all about productivity. 100% sRGB. Um, if you need 100% DCI-P3, there is a Max Pro version that's 1600p. I believe it's also higher refresh than 60 Hertz. Hopefully I'll have that for you uh, to review sooner than later. But again, from a productivity standpoint, this really does check all the boxes. Matte finish on both displays, 300 nits of brightness, which is perfectly fine uh, for indoor use. You know, outside, a little bit more of a challenge. And yes, it's portable, but I have to say, in my mind, it's great that it's portable, but more likely something I would use in a static or stationary setup like you're looking at now. Because how much more easily, inexpensively, and efficiently could you get a four display setup than what you're looking at here right now, especially one that's actually practical, usable. Now, keep in mind, these are not touchscreen. I wish that they were, and hopefully that's another revision we'll get out of you perfect over time, but this is a really good starting point. I found that the three hinges there are firm. They are stiff, no question about it. Uh, there are only three inputs on the back, which I'll be showing you after the demonstration, two Type-C, one HDMI. It is a mini HDMI or micro. And uh, again, the beauty here is also that once you install the DisplayPort uh, driver that you'll need to literally drive this the way I'm doing it now, which will take you a minute, one USB-C cable is driving these two displays. So only one cable is needed. Now, from a power standpoint, I did have to hardwire this in the second Type-C port. Some machines may be able to power it. Uh, but in my experience, at least specifically with the YogaBook 9i, we do need to use a separate source for power. And you can use this with a smartphone, a tablet, anything you want. Just make sure you provide it the necessary power. So let's take a look and a listen to the audio performance from this because it does have built-in speakers. Of course, the YogaBook 9i has some of the best audio you'll get out of any Ultrabook on the market, any laptop on the market, other than the other YogaBooks. But... Again, this portable dual stack display does have speakers, so here we go. Now keep in mind, I am using a condenser microphone. It is pointed away from this. Let me try to reposition. So I'm going to stop it there. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that the speakers are rear firing. So between the fact that I'm using a condenser mic and, you know, they're rear firing and they're pretty low power, they're not ideal. They are literally a better than nothing situation. But again, the real beauty of this entire setup is just how easily I can multitask. You can see uh, if I want to move back over uh, to the yoga book, very simple, come back uh, to the the actual dual stack display, also really simple. Um, in terms of specifications, I'm right on Uperfect's website, so this is going to be as perfect as it could possibly be. Let's jump into their portable monitors, and I do have another display, uh, their 18 and a half inch 4K uh, portable monitor that does support 100% TCI-P3. I believe it also has touchscreen. That's going to be another really cool one that I'll be covering shortly. That's been out though, unlike this one, which is Again, the first of its kind uh, to hit the market. So if I go to working and then their U station line, you can see the Delta, which is 500 uh, US dollars. Again, these are 15 and a half inch panels. 
And this is something that you perfect started marketing probably about, I want to say four, five months ago. So you've probably seen videos of this machine, but what you haven't seen or the light, what you haven't seen are the Max or the Max Pro. So we jump into the Max. This is the unit you're looking at now. Uh, the kickstand, by the way, is good. Um, I do think that Uperfect needs to put some more rubber feet on it, particularly if you can see my mouse in this area um, instead of one position, because while the kickstand is great and will allow you to set this up however you want, it's missing the rubber feet basically on the other sides, which I'll show at the end of the video, to really give it the grip it needs to hold position. So right now it's fine. It's a clamshell design. You can put this in tent mode. You can do pretty much anything you want with it. Uh, let's get to the specifications. Uh, and also just, you know, they're showing how they would think you'd be using it if you wanted to video edit, as you're seeing here, have your video up top, your timeline, you know, linear editing software on the bottom, easy. Uh, but again, uh, you just have to remember, this is not a color proofing display. So I think for a quick edit on the move, perfectly fine. At home, I really look at this as a portable monitor for productivity like they're showing there. I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, and again, at $550, I love that you can pick this up, move it easily when you compare it to, well, what it would potentially be replacing, which is a traditional monitor. You're going to see all the different poses they're showing it can go into. Um, and then, of course, the different applications. Now, would I recommend this for gaming with console? More so than with PC, absolutely. Um, but again, as a productivity display, an extension of what you're going to be able to get done, it's really quite amazing. Now, these are the three ports at the back. Um, and they are literally located, as you can see, right above uh, where the kickstand is housed, or I should say where it lays or, or rests. And I will say this to me is one design area I'm not in love with, but I'm sort of nitpicking because I do feel like once you get this set up, you're going to know exactly how you want it. But because the connections are at the back, which I think looks good for the aesthetic, after all, we don't see wires on you know either side, plugging it in... Um, a little bit complicated when it's open, clearly, because this is on the bottom panel's, you know, backside, uh, which means that when it's open, nearly impossible to get to. So, of course, you're going to just close it up, and then you'll have easy access uh, to these three ports. Now, um, inside the software, again, I think this is a pre-production uh, unit. Uh, there's not much uh, on-screen display stuff to show, which I will in a moment. Uh, but, again, everything works as it should, and that's the most important thing. But if... When you get this, you try to just connect it and you're waiting for it to drive both monitors. I will tell you now, if you do not install that driver, uh, you know, the DisplayPort driver, you will not have uh, a display on both. You will only have whatever you connect appear on the bottom display, which is exactly what I went through when I first received this and started to try uh, to use it. Uh, but the kickstand is solid metal, has, I think, really good tension. We just need rubber feet in more than one position. Uh, which, again, I will be showing. You don't need to see the difference between 720p and 1080p. We all learned that about 20 years ago. Uh, but there is a difference, no doubt. It, it absolutely works well. One of the things I really like about this is you can VESA mount it. And you'll see that at the end of the video um, when I break this down and we just do a tour of the body of the unit itself. There are those rear-firing speakers. Um, and, again, for me personally... I really believe this is the way to go if you're going to buy one of these. You know, nothing wrong with the 15 and a half inch models, but I personally much prefer these larger form factor displays because if you're going to enhance productivity or a game, I just see a lot more uh, to utilize with these larger uh, panels. Uh, also keep in mind that the 15 and a half inch model, I believe is the same brightness, but it does not have the same contrast ratio. So as you step up, at least from what I've seen, things do get better. And it's only a $50 bump, so it's really a matter of whether or not it's just way too much for you. Um, the Delta Max Pro, 18 inches, not 18 and a half like this, so it's actually smaller. Uh, but as I mentioned, it does have a higher resolution as well as a higher refresh rate. And there are the specs. Um, so 60 hertz, you can see 16 millisecond response time, 25 on the 15 and a half inch, which is another reason um, I prefer this build. Uh, a nice thing about the Pro 16 by 10 aspect ratio as opposed to the 16 by 9 you're getting here if you prefer that. And um, 1200 to 1 uh, contrast ratio, so I stand corrected on that. Uh, uh, not, you know, 
800 to 1. So it's pretty close. It's not that far apart. But where things really change uh, isn't the brightness, it's that color gamut. Again, 100% sRGB, but if you need DCI-P3, you know where to go. Um, both the Pro and the Max you're looking at now are 8-bit panels. They don't have a 10-bit version yet. Uh, the uh, 15.5-inch is only 6-bit. So another reason I do prefer uh, this display. And I've been waiting for these really since this launched because I knew uh, this would be right there behind it. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's practical, and it's a natural evolution in the portable monitor space. So um, I like this thing a lot. I can easily recommend it. Uperfect is, I think, a quality manufacturer in the portable monitor space. It's part of the reason that I partner with them and review their products. Um, and I've, I've only had good experiences with the majority of the displays that I've reviewed here on the channel over the last several years. So Uperfect has grown, um, and you know they have all the appropriate accessories. And I'm just excited about the prospect of you know, ha having this pack up fairly lightly and being able to take it wherever you go, or again, just keeping an incredibly low profile, working from home. And who would have thought we'd have four displays uh, literally in the span of, as you can see, a 42-inch monitor right behind these? I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing how much you could do, again, with such a small footprint. And that's only possible with this sort of tandem. And the other cool thing is these can both be turned into portrait as well. Right now we're in landscape, but of course the Yoga, uh, Yoga Book 9i supports landscape as well, uh, portrait as well, as does this. So it's really a matter of however you want to make use of this. Um, and the last thing I'm going to show, well, besides the fact that, you know, you're going to want to set this up appropriately so you can actually move things from display to display seamlessly, as you can see, very easy. Um, I haven't noticed really any bugs with this, which is good. Um, as I mentioned, the on-screen display, you know, the menu system, I think, is rough. But again, this is a pre-production unit. Maybe it'll arrive different. I know the 15.5-inch model does have a different UI than this model. So that could be a big part of it. But whether you're working, shopping, playing, this really can do it all. Again, as long as you're not looking for a high refresh experience. Um, and maybe gaming is something, you know, down the road that I will show on this. But again, for me, 60 hertz is the reason that this is pr purely productivity. Uh, but of course, you can game on it. It's not going to be bad. It's just, are you accustomed to a higher refresh rate like I am? And then in that case, you kind of never want to go back. Uh, but uh, besides installing, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the DisplayPort driver in order to make this happen that you will need to do, I'm showing you the actual... Uh, system display setup because basically what's going to happen when you get this going is that the two uh, displays from the Max are going to just appear randomly and you will have to set that up. It's not a big deal. I think when I originally set this up, four and two were over here on the right, just extending out like a 90 degree angle, um, essentially. And once I just stacked, you know, identified and stacked the Max uh, displays on top of each other, as you can see, you seamlessly travel from one to the other. The one thing I noticed is when you get down here to the taskbar of the top panel, things slow down. Now, if I had to guess what's going on here, and I'm not sure, and I didn't contact you perfect, and if anyone knows better, feel free to, to chime in. I believe what's going on there is that this panel is actually upside down. I say this because... Uh, I did test out last year Mobile Pixel's uh, display that has the stacked monitors because I thought that was going to be really the video I'd be doing here to show off, well, ultimate productivity in a very small form factor. And I think Mobile Pixel's is onto something. But what I learned through that, of course, as many of you know, some of you don't, is that in order to accomplish what they did there, the top display was actually flipped upside down. And, you know, it, it ended up creating some issues like this so I feel like, you know, this isn't a big deal. It only happens when you get to the very bottom of the display that the mouse starts to essentially lag a little bit. Um, so it's not a major issue, but it's still something that is there that I would, you know, be remiss uh, or, you know, I, if I did not mention, make mention of that issue. So again, um, fairly easy to set up, install that driver, set up the monitors however you want. Uh, you know, if you did this in a portrait setup, this is going to look a little bit different, obviously. 
Um, they're going to just all be next to each other rather than in this, uh, you know, setup. And also, if you do end up mounting this on a stand, uh, a VESA arm, monitor arm, then, you know, the world is your oyster in terms of configuration uh, flexibility. But really like this thing. Now, let me just break it down and actually show you, since you've seen how it works, uh, both from a video uh, and, you know, scrolling standpoint, everything is exactly what it should be. Brightness is right up near 100%, but I'm going to double check that now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually close it. Bear with me because I am still recovering from major surgery, and this is um, one of the heavier units that I've actually had to deal with. So even though it is very light, and you can see here, pretty firm as I fold it down, and this is what I like about it, is that it, you know, it holds position. A little bit of wobble when you release, but once it finds its balance, it's fine. And if my audio is changing now because I'm moving around, please forgive me. Have patience. So the first thing you will notice as I've mentioned, and I'll try my best uh, with this, the cables. And when it's closed like this, very easy to access. Um, I don't think it's problematic that they did this, but it's definitely a deviation from the majority of the portable monitors out there putting the plugs on the side. Um, I don't think it's bad. It's just something I needed to make mention of. So let's go ahead and disconnect. Actually, I didn't show the on-screen uh, display. So before I disconnect anything, you can see the speakers here on the rear. You can see our power button uh, along with the menu navigation, the LED to let you know things are working. Uh, the only other port that's not occupied right now is the HDMI that I mentioned. Remember, one of these is providing power. The other is the only link to our laptop. So we have a full functioning uh, Type-C port, uh, power delivery, as well as audio and video. Uh, and then we have another that's really just a uh, singular function. And then, of course, the HDMI port, if you're using any device that really does not have uh, video over Type-C, is what it comes down to. Now, with the kickstand, these are the rubber feet I was mentioning. And you can see they're only here, which means that if this is meeting, contacting the surface, you're fine. But if you try to put this in an orientation where it's not, let's say we get wider like this, you want a more of a flat profile, no rubber feet here. There, I mean, there are two, but they're very low profile. You can see them right there. So it's not that Uperfect didn't think of it. I just wonder if we needed a little bit more than this. Um, and, you know, that's really my only complaint about this. You can see the VESA mount points here. So that's a great feature, no question about it. Um, and, you know, build quality is very good. I, I wasn't really sure what to expect with this. But I have to say, I was really pleasantly surprised overall. So let me go ahead and open this back up. Hopefully it doesn't slide on us. And I'm just going to show you uh, the on-screen display that I was making mention of. So get this right back next to it. Hit the uh, menu button. And you can see it just appeared down here. And basically, pretty easy to navigate with that rocker. You can see I'm just toggling. Of course, this just went to sleep on me, which figures, but it'll come right back. No worries. And let's get the menu back up. Now, if you just hit the rocker, you're just going to get volume control. So you need to hit the power button. The power button is a dual function button. A double tap gets you in and out. Single press will access each individual menu. So if I wanted to go into picture, I would again press the power button, navigate to what I wanted to modify. You can see we have different profiles for the colors, but you know, I find standard to be the most pleasing personally, um, but it's really just a matter of personal preference. You know, I also did set this to cool as opposed to warm. So that's another thing you want to be aware of. Everybody's going to want to do whatever they think is best for themselves in terms of their work. And of course, eye fatigue, but that's pretty much it. You know, double press that and uh, long hold to get out, get back is what I meant. Um, the color settings, color temperature, I said, set it to cool as I mentioned blue light at zero, your audio settings, just mute and volume control, other settings, your aspect ratio, language, reset, and then your inputs. And that is pretty much it. So overall, again, I do think this is um, not only the only product of its kind right now, but also incredibly innovative. My wish list for the future for you, Perfect, give us touchscreen, give us something high refresh. I mean, I can only imagine how much artists would enjoy using this. Um, and even just taking notes on it would be excellent because of its flexibility with that kick screen, being able to like 
essentially go completely into a clamshell mode. You can see that range of motion. And you can see it sliding now, and there it plopped. Um, and that's part of what I was talking about with the rubber feet. If somehow, you know, that is slightly re-engineered, I think it will be beneficial. I'm not saying a lot of people want to use it like this, but slightly elevated so you could write on this surface at an angle and still have a workable top display, I think is a pretty smart concept, you know, using it like an easel uh, of sorts um, or a drafting table. I, I like that concept. It's just not fully fleshed out uh, in this first iteration of uh, the Max uh, stacked portable monitor system. But Uperfect, uh, the U-Station has come a long way and I'm really impressed with it. And I think it's going to be an excellent uh, dual display for me to have uh, what traditionally would be a secondary monitor for my 57-inch ultra-wide. I'll just end up having this right next to it so that I've got two more displays just for, well, whether I'm streaming, whatever it may be, this is going to be an excellent accessory uh, to easily have two displays. Uh, maybe I just want my Nest uh, camera system to be on one of them. There are just so many things that I could use this for, and because its footprint is so minimal, that is the beauty. So uh, kudos to you, Perfect. Uh, appreciate them sending it over. As usual, love uh, cutting-edge products like this, and that's what I consider this. We're moving in the right direction, as yet again, uh, everything went to sleep on me. Um, so I absolutely can easily recommend this. If you have any other questions or comments, uh, please feel free to post them. Maybe they'll build in a battery also, but that would make it heavier. And I think making this lighter is the goal. Higher refresh, higher resolution, make it lighter. Maybe we can dream one day we'll have dual OLEDs just like this one over here. Granted, that will be much more expensive. Um, and look, I'm sure eventually Uperfect's going to have a foldable um, portable monitor just like Asus launched at CES. But again, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them at that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.